Welcome to the Vista 3 by Chroma Q video training series. In this video, we will learn how to set up a new show file and patch fixtures. Upon starting the Vista application, Vista will present you with a pop-up window. The actions available here are open the last show you were working on, open a different pre-existing show file, create a brand new empty show file or to quit the software, press new show. You will be prompted to enter a new show file name. Press OK when ready. Vista's patch view is the first screen that you see when creating a new show file. The patch view is also the first of Vista's six window navigation buttons found at the bottom left of the application. Users can change views by left clicking on the appropriate button. Keyboard shortcuts can also be used to quickly jump to a specific window. The Windows keyboard shortcut for the patch window is Ctrl-Alt-1. The default view for the patch is called Table View, which can be found towards the top left of the screen. The Table View provides a visual representation of the 512 DMX channels available in each DMX universe. Vista's individual universes are tabbed horizontally across the top and go all the way up to 256. Universes can be selected by left-clicking on one of the tabs or by entering a numerical number in the DMX Universe patch settings. To patch fixtures, users will first need to define the specific make, model, and control mode of the fixture they would like to control. Towards the top right of the screen is where Vista's factory library can be found. Users can manually search for a fixture profile by clicking the triangle to the left of each heading. Upon doing so, Vista will expand to reveal a list of manufacturers and their specific models. Vista will define the fixture model and control mode within the name. The number of DMX channels that this profile uses is also noted in brackets. The profile is selected by left-clicking it. It will be highlighted when doing so. Let's select a Robe Robin 1200 LED wash in Mode 1. Once a profile is selected, you can define your patch options underneath the Fixture Library within the Patch tab. The Quantity defines how many of the selected fixture you would like to patch in a single instance. This value can be changed by typing a new number in the box. This value can also be increased or decreased by pressing the up and down arrows found towards the right of the numeric entry box. Users can quickly increase or decrease the value by holding left-click and moving the mouse up and down. The label of the fixture can be customized to suit user preference. The name entered in this field is what will be shown underneath the fixture icon in Vista's Fixture Chooser view and in all other places where the fixture label is referenced. Every fixture in a show file will have a unique ID. This unique identifier is the fixture number. Vista will auto-increase the fixture number by 1 for every unit you patch, starting at the fixture number you specify. The DMX Universe defines which Universe Vista tab you would like to patch into. The DMX address specifies the DMX starting address of each fixture. If you prefer, you can also define Universe and DMX address by an absolute address. The absolute address continues past 512 channels. For example, absolute address 513 would be DMX Universe 2 address 1. Users can press Patch or enter on a keyboard to apply the patch settings that have just been defined. Upon doing so, the table view will automatically update to represent the new patch. Here, we can see 10 Robin 1200 sequentially patched one after another. We see the ID number increasing by 1 for every unit, alongside the fixture label. Above the fixture library, there is a search function. This can offer a much quicker way of finding the fixture profile that you would like to patch. Let's search for a Mac Viper profile in 16-bit mode. This box is character-based, so you don't need to worry about capital letters or spaces. We will patch 10 of them and call them spots. Another way of patching in Vista is to left-click and hold on the fixture profile and drag into the table view letting go of your mouse click at your desired starting address. Changing an already patched fixture's DMX address can also be achieved using similar drag-and-drop actions. Users can select fixtures by clicking on them individually or dragging over them to select multiple. Once selected, you can drag-and-drop to a new starting address. This could even be in a different DMX universe. 
the fixtures will turn red to indicate when they cannot be patched. This may be because there are not enough DMX channels available, or that there is already something patched at those specific addresses. This patching procedure can be repeated for all fixture types in your show. Vista's spacing tool can be used to automatically add a space in between each fixture. For the next set of fixtures, six ETC Luster 2 profiles. If we set a spacing of 20, we can see that the fixture takes up eight channels, and the remaining 12 channels are left empty before the next fixture is patched. Underneath the factory library, Vista has a separate generic folder. This is where we can find profiles such as single channel dimmers or common static LED control formats. Let's patch six blue parkans. We will use the generic dimmer profile for this and label them blue. We can repeat this process for the red parkans. Fixtures can also be patched using the command line interface. The fixture number is specified before defining the universe and address. For example, fixtures 131 through 136 at 3.21, where the number 3 before the point is the universe and the number after the point, 21, is the DMX address within that universe. Fixtures can be repatched using an at at command. For example, 131 through 136 at at 3.13. For our stage set LEDs, let's patch a generic LED RGBAW fixture. Multi-patching a profile allows you to patch several individually addressed instances of it, but control all of them as a single fixture within Vista. If we set the multi-patch value to be 4 in this example, these four individual LEDs would be controlled by fixture number 201. The second view in Vista's patch is called the list view. The list view provides a spreadsheet-style view of your currently patched show. Users can sort by ascending or descending by clicking on one of the column headers. The view can also be filtered by using the search function at the top. For example, you could filter to view all of your blue parkans. Fixture labels, IDs, DMX addresses, and universe numbers can be adjusted by double-clicking in a box and changing the value. Renaming and renumbering patch fixtures can also be achieved in the table view by right-clicking on a fixture selection and selecting Label Fixtures or Renumber Fixtures from the pop-up menu. Useful tip! When labeling fixtures, if you enter a hashtag, Vista will sequentially number each fixture for you. Universe tabs can also be labeled to provide further customization and ease of navigation. To do this, right-click and select Label Universe. To delete a fixture, right-click on it and press Delete. Alternatively, you can press the Delete key on the keyboard. A confirmation will be required to complete the action. Vista's third patch view is called the DMX view. This screen is used to display the output values of every DMX channel within the universe. The cells are clear if the value is zero and become highlighted if the output is adjusted. To display the output of another universe, click on the Universe tabs at the top. Vista's Connect Universes window is where we route Vista universes to specific DMX ports on physical consoles, or send Ethernet-based lighting protocols such as ArtNet, PathPort, or Streaming ACN. Upon opening the window, Vista will display all consoles within the show file, their associated ports, whether they are connected, and their current Vista universe assignment. To assign or change a universe numerical, numbers can be entered into the Vista Universe column, or you can again change the value by clicking on the up and down arrows. If a destination is unassigned, no DMX data will be sent to this port. Ethernet-based protocols can be manually added by pressing Add Network Connection. ArtNet, PathPort, or Streaming ACN is selected by pressing on an appropriate header. Let's add four ArtNet broadcast ports. Specify your desired ArtNet, Net, Subnet, and Universe, and press Add. Each time you press Add, Vista will automatically increase the universe number by one. Once complete, press Close, and you will now see your newly added ports have been added to the window. You assign your Vista universes in the same way you would do for physical DMX ports. Don't forget that ArtNet starts counting from zero, so you may need to assign your first Vista universe to zero zero. 
Artnet, Streaming ACN, and Pathport data output can also be individually toggled on and off by checking or unchecking the Output Enabled column. Once you are happy with your configuration, you can press Close on the Connect Universes window. Towards the right of Vista's patch views is where the fixture control macros can be found. Lamp on will send a lamp ignite command. Lamp off will send a lamp douse command. Reset will perform a full mechanical reset and calibration. To apply a macro, select the fixtures you would like to apply these to and then left click on your desired macro. The DMX macro window will appear. Within this window, users can choose to group macros together or increase the stagger time between each individual macro command. Pressing OK will start the macro sequence. Advanced Patching Sometimes, it may be necessary to increase the DMX hold time of a macro. This can be achieved within the show file by pressing the DMX macro tab. The script structure for the macro is DMX channel at DMX value with the hold time in milliseconds. Here, we can see the reset value for a Mac Viper is channel 26 at 10 bits and hold for 6 seconds. The wait time is prefaced with a hashtag to denote time. Towards the bottom of the table view is where Vista's fixture pool can be found. Vista's fixture pool is a storage place that allows you to temporarily unpatch fixtures without losing any existing programming on them. To add fixtures to the pool, select them and drag them into the pool. To repatch them, repeat the drag and drop process. Once a fixture is patched, transforms can be applied to adjust how the fixture behaves. Minimum intensity percentage values can be specified by adjusting the preheat value. Maximum intensity values can be adjusted by changing the limit value in addition to being able to specify the dimming curve. Common position transforms such as invert pan and invert tilt can also be found towards the bottom of this screen. To invert a fixtures pan, select the fixtures and check invert pan. Minimum and maximum values, in addition to inverts, can be applied to any DMX channel. To do this, press the Advanced tab. Press Add and select your desired DMX channel. For example, you may wish to invert the zoom range for a specific fixture type. Offset is also available within the Advanced Fixture Transform window. Offsetting the pan channel, for example, allows you to adjust the home position for fixtures that may be hung at an angle. The Properties tab is another place where you can adjust the fixture label and ID. Pressing Customize Gobo and Color Wheels allows you to change color wheel or gobo slots on a show-by-show -show basis. For instance, we may wish to add a custom gobo to Wheel 1 Slot 1. Finally, the Channels tab provides information on the fixture's features and channel numbers and which DMX address they are patched to. For instance, here we can see that the Viper's Cyan channel is currently addressed at DMX address 29. To learn more about Vista, or to download the free demo software, please visit vistabichromaq.com.